hello hi my dear students so i hope you guys are now well prepared for your final exam <clears throat> and uh, let's review the questions that you gave in this last cbt and i hope it gave you the same exam feel uh, just be relaxed don't uh, look at the clutter that is around you don't talk too much to the people uh, just focus on uh, what you have studied the concepts that you have learned over a period of last one year and just be confident it is an exam that requires you to know only 50% and if you know 50% you are through so don't put too much of stress what will happen what will i do how will i manage will i be able to don't doubt yourself it is people like you for which this this exam is being made and so if you are not able to clear it then who will just think like that all right so let's start with discussion of anesthesia questions that came in your CBT. <clears throat> Question number one: <clears throat> What is the correct order of step in chain of survival for a person suffering from cardiac arrest when admitted in a cardiac intensive care unit following coronary artery bypass grafting? So basically, this is asking you for chain of survival. We have discussed this thing in detail that there are two scenarios in CPR. One is outside hospital cardiac arrest (OHCA) and one is in hospital cardiac arrest (IHCA). So by reading at the history in the question, what does it look like? It looks like in hospital cardiac arrest because somebody who is admitted in an ICU and is have undergone coronary artery bypass grafting is now having a cardiac arrest. So that is in hospital cardiac arrest. And both of these chains of survival have five points, six points that we need to know. And they are very similar except the first step. So the first step in, in hospital is actually prevention. You don't want that the cardiac arrest should happen. So early recognition and prevention becomes the first step. Then we know immediately we have to call for help and start CPR. Defib the patient and then post cardiac arrest care. So rest of the things remains most more or less the same. So the option that is similar to this is first look where is the first option E. So A, C, D, E. So option number D. This is a very easy option. Usually when there is a question like this, if you know one option which as correct, then you are most of the time correct because the shuffling is such that only one option appears to be correct. Max to max two. So remember in these types of questions, you don't really need to remember everything. Just if you remember the first or second point also, then also it is going to be very, very easy. Okay. <clears throat> so this is your chain of survival for in hospital cardiac arrest first step is early recognition then activation of emergency response system then cpr defib post cardiac arrest care and recovery now question number two a patient had received a spinal anesthesia for lscs 15 hours back multiple attempts at insertion were performed and she now complains of an occipital headache that is worse on standing what would be the treatment of choice for this condition? So somebody had a spinal anesthesia about a <clears throat> day before and now she is having a lot of headache which is worse on standing. What is your diagnosis? What is your diagnosis? Your diagnosis is PDPH. Your diagnosis is PDPH. Post dural puncture headache. PDPH. Post dural puncture headache. And how do you treat postdural puncture headache? There are two methods, first line and definitive or last resort. First line is symptomatic. While definitive management is considered as the treatment of choice. treatment of choice so the question that is asked is treatment of choice that is not the first line management it is ultimately the management that is going to affect the pathology that is epidural blood patch can you give paracetamol yes can you give hydration yes can you give oral caffeine yes all these things can be done for pdph as first line management symptomatic management but treatment of choice best treatment definitive treatment last resort treatment whenever you hear words like this the answer would be epidural blood patch okay contraindications to lma 
कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन टू एल एम ए वॉट इज एल एम ए आई टोल्ड यू वेन आई टॉट यू एल एम ए आई टोल्ड यू दिस थिंग दैट देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दे माइट नॉट गिव यू द फुल फॉर्म एंड दे माइट गिव यू ओनली द शॉर्ट फॉर्म दैट इज वाई इन सर्टन थिंग शॉर्ट फॉर्म्स आर नेसेसरी एल एम ए इज अ सुप्रा ग्लॉटिक एयरवे डिवाइस बाय द नेम लैरेंजियल मास्क एयरवे Laryngeal mask airway, also called as supraglottic airway device. Or SAD, supraglottic airway device or SAD. And we know it's a device which is practically in between a face mask as well as an endotracheal tube. Not as invasive as an endotracheal tube, but not as non invasive and ineffective as a face mask right but one thing we know for sure that it is not a definitive airway that means doesn't prevent the risk of aspiration doesn't prevent the risk of aspiration can it be used in difficult airway yes it is one of the main state treatments Uh, uh, methods of securing airway in difficult airway so it is not a contraindication it's an indication can it be used in last tongue definitely it can be used in last tongue we just saw that it is a treatment it is a method of choice in difficult airway can it be used in low airway resistance yes high airway resistance is a contraindication because the ventilating pressures required would be very high and it can cause leak of gases but should not be used in increased risk of gastric regurgitation why because it is not a secure device it is not something from which you can prevent aspiration now question number 4 short acting easter local anesthetic is short acting so whenever you get a question like this long acting short acting amino easter amino amide then you always need to remember the basic that there are two types of local anesthetics amino easters and amino amides and we know the general thing that all local anesthetics with one i in their spelling are amino esters and two i in their spelling are amino amides and we know that a amino ester is short in duration while an amino amide is long in duration right and look at now which are two i which are one i two i two i two i which is one i procaine which is actually shortest local anesthetic shortest acting local anesthetic procaine is shortest acting local anesthetic okay <clears throat> least potent inhalational anesthetic agent you know you can expect these questions in your exam these are very very commonly asked questions for you least potent how do you define the potency potency is defined by mac which is the minimum alveolar concentration of an inhaled anesthetic agent which prevents response in 50% of individuals right and we know that least potent is nitrous oxide most potent is methoxyflurane so methoxy is out nitrous is not in the option so we know least potent volatile anesthetic agent is des when we say volatile anesthetic agent we are excluding pure gases like nitrous oxide and xenon so the correct answer is des for this i have given you a wonderful table we have discussed this in class as well if you remember this table you will never mark a question of potency or speed wrong in the exam right so this is an order of blood gas partition coefficient from fast to slow and mac from least to most and you can see sevo iso halo they always follow the same order that means sevo is faster than iso which is faster than halo and sevo is less potent than iso which is less potent than halo all right so just remember this table and you will never make a question of this wrong in your exam right so these were the five questions that were asked in your cvt pretty easy questions i kept it straight forward so that you get this confidence these are the questions which are commonly asked in your exam i hope you are preparing well 
keep your spirits high this is just the first step so don't feel tired just make sure that you cross this uh, part and you reach where things are going to become beautiful and happy for you my best wishes to you all the very best for your exam do let me know how was your experience after the exam and we'll surely catch up bye all the best good night